Hey everyone, it is Friday, January 7th. It is just after 11.30 a.m. and the temperature outside is a rather cold minus 9 degrees Celsius. And I am here at Broadview Station. And for this one I'll be heading outside into the bitter cold. And I'll be going for a walk around a neighborhood known as the Plater Estates. So this here is Broadview Avenue. I'm just going to take my mask off here so I sound a little clearer. And this is a walk that was requested by a YouTube channel member. And that member's name is Andrew Nielsen and he is a God tier member. So shout out to Andrew and thank you for the request. There goes the 100A bus north. And a big thank you to all the YouTube channel members and Patreon members who support this channel. So for this one, I'll be walking north a few blocks and then I'll turn east and head through a residential area and I'll eventually make my way down south to Danforth Avenue and I think maybe over to Chester Station. There's a medical clinic at 807. And a dental office. I think there's a lot of medical offices in this complex right here. And there's some pharmacies. is Pretoria Avenue coming up. So the Plater Estates is bounded to the west by the Don River and to the north by a street called Chester Hill and you could actually take that over to what's called the Chester Hill Lookout and you'd get a rather spectacular view of the skyline. I won't be going that way on this one, but I've been out that way before. And to the east, Jackman Avenue, and to the south, Danforth Avenue. There's a cafe. There's someone sitting down inside having a coffee. That's pretty awesome, considering that's a forbidden activity. So historically, this, been, this has been a predominantly Greek and upper middle class neighborhood. Greektown being located just to the east of here. And there's some interesting street art. Yeah, 
and it was settled in the 1800s. A gentleman named John Plater. Sorry, George Plater. I think John was one of his kids. And he could be described as a United Empire Loyalist. I think he made his way up to Canada via the US. And was originally from England. And that family had a plot of land that was around eight square kilometers. And in the early 1900s, it was divided up into residential plots. And later on on this block, we'll be going by an old mansion that served as a farmhouse that was built by the grandson of George Plater. And there's some controversy surrounding that property. There's the Estonian Baptist Church. And there's a large Estonian hall just up here on the left. And that street is Chester Hill, so that's where you'll find the Chester Hill Lookout. And here is Browning Avenue, so I guess this is probably the northern border of the Plater Estates to the east of Broadview. And there's a cafe. There's Chester Hill, and this is Browning. So for the next little while, we'll be touring through some residential areas. And this is pretty much the route that was requested by Andrew. And I haven't done a whole lot of residential exploring lately on the channel, so. Seemed like a good idea to take care of this one this morning. That intro you saw from Broadview Station was a bit of a faux entrance. I actually entered the station and head, headed down to the platform to record that. And then I left as if I had got off a train here. I was already in the area earlier today and I recorded part of a video that I hope to use as part of a live stream later tonight. That one ends in Broadview Station, or at least that segment of it will. So I don't think this area is classified as part of Riverdale, as it's north of Danforth and east of Chester. There's a really unique house on the corner up here at Jackman Avenue. So this would be the eastern boundary of the Plater Estates. And I think this street takes its name after one of the wives in the Plater family.
I wonder if they have a hot tub or something up there. It's an interesting addition. And there is Jackman Public School. As I walk directly into the sun. There's a look at the school. That's a junior public school. And this here is Butternut Street. So I think this is part of the route. It's kind of too cold to break out my smartphone and double check. There's certainly a lot of really nice older homes here. Most would have been built after 1912. And here's one of two streets named after the Plater family. This is Plater Boulevard. So I'll be heading south here. And this is Bayfield Crescent. I'm gonna continue southbound Plater Boulevard, but there's some interesting homes right around the corner here. There's some neighbors being friendly with one another. Here's a neat home. And here we turn on to Plater Crescent.
some neat homes out that way. I think that big old farmhouse is just around the corner here. And it was the source of quite a bit of controversy. It was built in 1870 and after World War II it fell into a state of disrepair and it became a boarding house. This is it right here, 28 Plater Crescent. So way back when this was the only house in the area and it overlooked a rather large plot of land. It has heritage status, but in the mid-2000s, it was purchased by surviving sisters of the Plater family by a local resident who bought it and started heavily renovating it. I think those renovations started in the 2010s. And there was quite an uproar over that as the house has been seriously reconfigured. It doesn't really look anything at all like its original self. And I think there are even calls to remove its heritage status. An extra level was added, but here it is. And it's been featured in a number of movies and TV shows over the years. I'm not sure if that's happened since the renovation. I don't know if the lady who renovated it it's still occupying it. If I didn't know the history, I would say it's rather, it's rather nice. The brick wall kind of turns a bit of a cold shoulder to the rest of the neighborhood. I'm not sure if that was an original element. It's always good to see historical buildings tastefully redone. and relatively true to their original self. So I'll stay out of that debate if this was good or not, but there's certainly a lot of history in that plot of land. Although this house kind of caught my eye coming around the corner. I think it's clearly the biggest property in this area. And it was purchased in the mid-2000s for about $700,000 over asking. And the redevelopment plans had the blessings of the sisters who were surviving members of the Plater family. Although perhaps that $700,000 was a little bit of grease to make sure that that happened. And just to the south is Danforth Avenue. Maybe we'll go another block. And then I'll head south down to Danforth. Some of these homes wouldn't look too out of place in the annex with that kind of rooftop element there. And 
ahead, we're back to Jackman Avenue. And it's amazing how densely they built their homes back then. They had all that land and a relatively low population density, but they still had the sense to build responsibly. How did we know that back in the early 1900s, but modern suburbs don't know that today? It's kind of amazing. So just to the south of here is Danforth Avenue, but I think there's a pathway here. I'll head over to Chester Station. Although we're only 22 minutes into the video, maybe I'll extend things a bit. Then I'll just walk one more station on Danforth. What's after Chester? I think Pape. See a sign there that says Subway. So this should be part of Chester Subway Station here. There's a laneway. So a lot of those homes you'll notice don't really have garages or driveways. The parking is in behind in these laneways. I wonder if that bike is being stored there or if it's a decoration. And there's a new accessible entrance to Chester Station. Actually, I don't know if this side is accessible. I think it's on the other side. Was this entrance really all that necessary with another entrance right across the street in such a low trafficked area? Here's another laneway. And I think I could just follow this park and then connect through some more laneways over to the next subway station, but let's go to Danforth. And I'll just finish up along there. And there is Messini across the street. Easily one of the best value restaurants in the city, in my opinion. Here's where Papa's Grill used to be. And I think they were a victim of all the restrictions last year. But Mezis, a very popular Greek restaurant just to the east of here, is moving into this location. So they're getting a pretty big upgrade on location. And I ate there actually about a month ago. So this is Greek Town, as we are east of Chester. Coffee. 
There it is. And no one has moved into the spot of that old Timmy's yet. And this is one of those areas where the only real reason for coming here in terms of it being a destination neighborhood are the restaurants. Now that the government's taken those out of the equation, it's going to be rough times indeed for this whole neighborhood. It was really hard hit during the last wave of restrictions. And a number of notable places went belly up. Hopefully these ones don't last too long and everything can open back up again. Perrier Avenue. And coming up is Carlaw Avenue. And there is a Starbucks. Oh, how I would love to pop into there. And on a day like this, I actually have my laptop on me. It'd be kind of ideal to sit down, charge the camera, and plan another walk while I'm out. I think that was a parking enforcement officer. Yep. And here we are at Pape Avenue. Is the former Nando's, which is now a Circle K. That chain has kind of invaded the city. Circle K's and cannabis shops. Taking my gloves off, getting the mask out.
And here we are at Lipton Avenue. So I'll pop into Pape Station and I'm actually kind of having second thoughts now. I'm thinking, since I still need to collect some footage for my live stream tonight, so I'll be doing one where I play pre-recorded walks as opposed to walking outside around the city. I might not want to get on the train here. Oh, well, I'll head down to the platform and pretend that's what I'm doing anyways. Oh, I think I want to go this way. So on that note, I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Again, thank you to our Patreon and channel members. And if you do wish to support the channel, there are links to Patreon and YouTube channel membership in the description. Also have a merch store at stridesway.com and an Instagram account at Johnny Strides. All right, thank you for watching, and I will catch you on the next one.